Good morning, SA Wine lovers, and welcome to the Save SA Wine live stream. This morning we are talking winelands. We are talking reasons to visit the winelands, and uh, we're talking uh, wine tourism. And um, I'm also here to uh, raise a few alarm bells. Well, firstly, look at this picture. Uh, we have fantastic experiences in the winelands. And um, this is a picture taken from uh, Clow Melvern um, with a very fantastic um, uh, ice cream and wine um, pairing, which is unique in the winelands. And uh, look at this view. This is the view over the Devon Valley. And um, this is what I want to talk about. We have so much to offer in our winelands, um, and, but it's time that we really um, start um, promoting it. And um, the reason why I want to raise a few alarm bells is because of the COVID situation in Europe. Um, if you guys have been watching the news the last few um, days and the last week or so, France, Spain, the UK, Germany, the Netherlands, all of these places have had a massive spike in COVID-19 cases. So um, what is the relevance of this? The relevance of this is that we might, and I think there's a very good chance that we will go into a tourism season that is really dead um, uh, from an international perspective. Uh, we have no clarity on when South African tourism will, uh, when South African borders will be reopening. Um, and uh, we've got to be proactive in the winelands. We've got fantastic experiences. And what we need to do now is try to promote this as much as possible to stimulate local tourism. So we are appealing to everybody to, to please um, join us um, and to let's get um, this summer kick-started um, and let's get more people in the, uh, in the winelands. Um, so it starts by the following uh, actions. This weekend, if you're in Cape Town or in, close to the winelands, why not go out to a wine farm? Go visit um, the winelands uh, go uh, for a wine experience. This ice cream and wine experience is a fantastic experience to do. I think you need to call them to uh, make a reservation. But to call these guys, make a reservation and um, go visit. Go visit um, as many as the wineries you can. Um, there's fantastic experience to be had. Um, and uh, we, from our side, we've also created a page on our website. Uh, you can go to bit dot ly forward slash visit winelands and you will find the list of winelands experiences and we are inviting every single winery or winelands business that have an experience um, that have accommodation that have a spa please come list it on our page it's totally free um, it's bit dot ly forward slash visit winelands and um, we really need to kick start our summer you know it's been a tough time in the winelands over the last few months and um, we've all had to adjust to not only a do new way of doing business but a lot of our businesses are still in a fight for survival uh, we've seen the statistics from winpro uh, there's more than eighteen thousand potential job losses in the next year and a half that's beside the people that already lost their jobs and um, you know wine tourism has lost two and a half billion rand between March and June alone. Um, as you guys have seen the South African economic statistics, um, in the previous quarter we um, had a 51% contraction in economic activity. So this all, um, you know, just compounds a problem and uh, we really, really need support. And um, everybody in the winelands need to, to, to really come to the party and wake up. This is not a time to be complacent. This is a time to be working and um, promoting our fantastic winelands tourism and um, our winelands area. Um, we ourselves have been working on a few projects to promote the winelands, including launching our podcast about the winelands. This was launched in February. Um, we've launched this um, Safe SA wine group on Facebook. Uh, we're collaborating on the hashtag 1660 project with uh, Erica Taylor 
And uh, we've also had a Catholic Classic Day promotion, amongst other things, in which we podcasted and interviewed six of your top Cup Classic producers. We're producing fantastic MCC. Um, we've now completed more than 60 interviews with wineries and other winelands businesses. And your podcasts are published on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram TV, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. And um, as part of your podcasting program, we've also created more than 60 short explainer videos on businesses and activities in the winelands. The net effect of this is that our collaborative networks are now reaching more than 250,000 people every week. And uh, we are currently doing two promotional live streams daily, weekdays and weekends. Um, and um, our next live stream will be tonight at 7 o'clock. Um, uh, we also be, will be producing a few videos on um, our summer activities that will be posted in this group and on your Facebook pages, YouTube and so on uh, during the course of this weekend. Um, with the summer season on your doorstep, it's now more important than ever for winelands businesses to really step up your promotional activities. Um, and we are inviting everyone to contact us with any new ideas that they might have, any specials you might offer, whatever. Um, our, I think our group, people in our group are ready to support our winelands and give them a reason to support it. Um, a great way for you to get more exposure for your wine, um, your restaurant, your accommodation, your winelands experience, or your winelands business is to use one of our premium service offerings. Um, we realize that times are tough. Um, and to give you a helping hand, we've decided to give away a 500 rand credit to any winelands business as a gift to kickstart your promotion for summer. All you need to do to, do, to claim this is email us at visitthewinelands at gmail.com Give us information on your winelands business and um, we will send you a 500 rand credit to use in our, um, our media store uh, and you can, you can actually uh, get more um, promotion for your business. And talking about promotion and campaigns, we are right slap bang in the middle of our 1660 campaign um, in collaboration with Erica Taylor. Um, the website to go to is www.savesawine.co.za um, There's also a calendar of uh, which producer are featured on which day. As you guys are aware, we are pre uh, featuring one producer for 60 days um, and that started on the 30th of August. It carries on until the 28th of October and um, you can get the calendar at savesawine.co.za forward slash 60 in 60. Um, and uh, we would really appreciate it if you guys could go and um, uh, like us on Instagram, um, leave a, uh, a message on our Instagram page. It's instagram.com forward slash savesawine.co.za. Every comment helps us um, to get more awareness. So please uh, go and support, um, even if you just share um, a, a a post or leave a comment you are doing your bit in helping us in the in the winelands um so that would be very very nice if you guys could do that um then it's a giveaway time thank you to our sponsors um the fishwives club um i love this uh this uh caption here the cork is dead uh, they are launching a um a range of um canned wines um it's gorgeous just these designs are just absolutely out of this world. And um, you could, by entering, uh, the, there's a day of a giveaway. You can win 24 of their cans um, on the first production run. And it's free to enter. All you need to do is go to fishwivesclubcangiveaway.gr8.com. Like I said, entry is free. All you need to do is go to fishwivesclubcangiveaway.gr8.com. And um, now uh, our featured producer of the day is um, uh, Laurie Cooper, uh, winemaker at Abington Wine Estate. And um, I 
did a podcast with her not a, a while ago. She's also our featured producer on your hashtag 1660 promotion today. And um, you can listen to the podcast. I'm going to play it in a minute. And um, uh, Laurie is a winemaker together with her father. Um, and um, they're making wines in KwaZulu Natal. And they also own the KwaZulu Natal School of Wine. But let me not steal a thunder. Let Laurie explain um, what they do. And um, let's go on, get on with the podcast. Welcome to About the Winelands. In this show, we will be chatting to influencers and leaders in the wine industry, winemakers, restaurants, and other businesses. Tune in every Wednesday and Friday for our latest episodes. You will find us on YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcast, and Apple Podcast. <music> Be sure to subscribe so that you do not miss out. Now, to get on with the show. Today I'm talking to Laurie Cooper of Abingdon Estate. Good morning, Laurie. Good morning, Will. I'd love to hear a bit more about yourself and um, how you became involved in the wine industry. Yeah, so I am, um, my kind of journey in wine is, is probably a short one, but a fast-tracked one. Um, it goes back to my parents started Abingdon back in 2004. So I have throughout school, I kind of, I was involved in the industry and then my parents were running a wine estate, but I never had any interest in it. I don't really remember much of it. Um, it was only much later, around 2012, I was living in London and I finally decided to do just a, a quick wine course because I really needed to know more about wine. Um, and that was kind of the, the beginning of being completely sucked in and immersed in this industry. And from, from one short wine course to uh, my WSET diploma, um, I then came home, started to join the farm uh, full time. So I did the winemaking with my dad, opened the wine school so that I could run the WSET courses and, and do and then got involved on kind of sommelier side of things and so went into my sommelier qualifications won the Moet and Chandon best young sommelier last year and awesome. i'm currently on the master of wine program so it's it's been kind of a whirlwind um but but loved every minute of it tell us a bit more about this Moet program that sounds exciting and congratulations on winning thank you so it's as I said, my history is a lot more on the the study of wine, the wine tasting, and I've never really been involved in the sommelier uh, service side of things. So I did the qualification 
just to kind of better myself and also because I was running those courses and wanted to be able to teach it. And I thought I'd just enter the competition on a bit of a whim, really. Uh, so it was the Moten Shandong Best Young Sommelier, which took place in October last year. And we went through the quarterfinals, the semifinals, the next thing I found myself in the finals and, and won it. So it's, yeah, that side of things is also taking off and being a great, great journey. That's awesome. So tell me, how did your parents start making wine in KZN? Um, I mean, I, I, you know, I, 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 I'm from, I'm from um, the Cape. So I was actually, I didn't even know you guys were making wine there, to be honest. So I, I feel, yeah, I, you, I, um, you know, it's, I was ashamed of myself. But, but anyway, tell us a bit more how you started and a little bit of the history of Abington Estate. Yeah, I suppose you could, you could call it brilliance or sheer madness. Uh, so my dad, he, he, we moved from Johannesburg. We were based, my parents were based in Johannesburg and moved to Abingdon back in 2000. And they bought the farm with absolutely no plans to make wine. My dad is a petroleum engineer, has absolutely no experience in winemaking at all. Um, but the more Ian looked at the land and the more he wanted to do something with it, he kept coming up with different ideas. And he was, we were actually in, in the Alps. And he saw these vineyards and it just, something just triggered. And he just thought, you know what, if, if you can make wines in extreme climates, if you can make them in wetter climates at altitude, why aren't there any vineyards in Natal? So he started researching it and he started researching. This idea came about in about 2002 and in 2004, he planted the first vines. So everything he's done from the beginning then um, was 100% self-taught. He has no experience in wine. Cuisine Natal had no vineyards, uh, but he's just an incredibly determined, stubborn, uh, hardworking man. And he decided to make it happen. So in 2007, we produced our first KZN estate wine. What an awesome story. Now that you mentioned the, the, the Swiss Alps, um, I mean, um, some of the best wine in Europe are made and then obviously consumed right there because it's not a lot of... Um, uh, volume that can be produced in, in in those extreme climates. Are you finding the same um, volume type of um, thing that you're producing small amounts? Yeah, so we're a, we're a very small small estate. We're about three and a half hectares under vine, um, and it's exactly that. In an extreme climate, you know, for us, we want to be able to make sure that we are focusing on the quality and not the quantity. And the bigger you go. Obviously, things like summer rainfall, you know, you've got to manage your rot, your hands-on maintenance and canopy management is so big that it would just be silly to try and produce on a mass scale. You just can't keep on top of it. So we do keep it small. Um, it's small production. And it just means that we can really, as a family, stay on top of the viticulture and make sure that we are, we're monitoring everything and we're really looking after the vines in this kind of a climate. But it sounds like you're the only one producing KZN, am I right? Uh, there's three of us. So oh. on a commercial level, there's yeah now three producers. So Abingdon is the oldest, and we produce the first estate wines out of KZN. Um, and then since then, Highgate Wine Estate is just across the valley. They've um, producing and they've joined us. And there's also a Cathedral Peak Cellars, um, of course, yes. Cathedral Peak Wines. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, do you think there's growth in the industry there? Do you um, see opportunity for, for more um, vineyards to be planted? Absolutely. I hope so. Um, I think, especially with global warming, we're starting to see, you know, the, the quality this year was sensational. We're starting to see warmer days. We're seeing less rain. Our, our season is becoming drier and drier. Um, and so I think there's huge potential to, to build uh, KZN is a wine region and get more wine estates. We've got beautiful altitudes. So Abingdon sits at 1140 meters. Um, so beautiful altitude with dry, the season getting drier, those cold, cold winters. It's, it's a lovely place to be. It's amazing. Um, uh, it, it, the global warming seems to be having an effect everywhere. I've been to, uh, I think, what's the place called? Denby Wine Estate in Surrey in England, mm -hmm. yes. which um, they used to have warmers in their vineyards to actually eat their vines during the cold winter days. And the last few years, they haven't needed it. And also the quality of the wines have improved significantly because of, you know, yeah. the warming effect. 
Yep, I think there's there's certainly places that we thought wouldn't produce previously are now are now in the limelight, and yeah, the UK is definitely one of them. Yeah, amazing. So, what can your guest experience when visiting your estate? What do you have there? So we we focus on we're a family wine estate, and we want you to be able to to really experience that. So. On the estate, we have a tasting room and we have a wine bar that serves tapas style meals on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and we always want you to know that if you do come to Abingdon, you will meet one of us. You'll meet, you'll be able to speak to one of the winemakers, either myself or Ian. Um, Jane does all the cooking. Jane's my mother. She does all the cooking. Um, and we're very much involved. And there's always a bustling atmosphere. You get to taste a range of all our wines. Um, and it's just that really personal experience um, that we hope to be able to give people when they visit. So the fact that you're calling it a wine bar um, um, beside the tasting room um, sounds to me like you like almost there must be some locals coming and it's almost a place where people come to hang out on weekends on a regular basis. Is this true? Very much so, yeah. So we've um, been very privileged that I would say for about the last five to six years most weekends are fully booked Um, and we've got repeat customers a lot of our Durban based guests travel to us for lunch Um, and so yeah we've been we've been very successful Uh, last year we won the American Express Dining Awards the best kept secret in the country Um, and yeah it's a it's a it's a great place that's that's always going to be busy and and hopefully an experience amazing so Laurie, now to the important stuff. Tell us a bit more about the wines that you are making there. So we make quite a, for a small estate, we make a range of different wines um, from, well, MCC, although we don't call them Method Cup Classic, we call it a Method Traditional. Um, so we've got a Chardonnay Blanc de Blanc. We've got a Rosé style MCC. We also have a Viognier Petnat. Um, in terms of the white wines, we have Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, and Viognier. On the red wines, we have Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, and a Nebbiolo, which we produce the first, um, our first vintage this year. And they, so f- a range of different wines we like to be able to experience, um, experiment. There's always one or two different blends or different wines that we produce each year just to give you something different. But we hope that they, give you a uniquely KZN profile. So everything we do is 100% estate wines. It's all from the farms. And we want you to be able to, to hopefully taste that difference, to, to taste KZN wines, uh, that continental aspect, that lovely fresh acidity, the elegance that comes with them. So we're never going to make a full-bodied, big, bold, uh, rich style of Mediterranean-style wine. But we do make something that's uniquely KZN. Um, and yeah, it's been it's been a great a great start for me, I think, in my winemaking journey to be able to come to a family estate where we can experiment um, and play around, and yeah, we have great fun. Amazing. So, uh, where are your wines sold? Um, are you exporting them or local market? What's what what happens? So about ninety eight percent are sold from from the estate uh, cellar mm-hmm. door. So. We are listed in a few restaurants um, and hotels around the province, but most of them are sold from from the farm. And I think a large part of that was the decision that we didn't want to be in a bottle store. We didn't want to be a wine on the shelf. We wanted people to come visit us to hear the store. Um, We don't export at the moment. Uh, it possibly would be something that we'll look into in the future. But again, it was just making sure that we looked after our local base, making sure that we got to the point where as a young wine estate, we had consistent production. We were happy with the quality. We were, were building a name when in our local base um, before looking at any other options. I understand that. Are you, um, I mean, with your wine bar being popular and also the local market there would you consider maybe expanding to a restaurant is that something in your in your pipeline definitely yeah so there's we've been very lucky with a lot of our listings so far have been um great listings so things like the oyster box hotel hartford house ninth avenue and we've been able to be quite selective um which has been fantastic and it's it's only really in this last year that we've managed to see out 
a full year with our wines. So previously they were selling out within two, three months and we would spend most of the year with no wine, wow. which as a wine estate becomes a little difficult if people are coming to your tasting to taste your wines. Um, there was one December was our busy, busiest period of the year and we, we closed. We had no wine. So a lot of it in previous years has also been just looking after the tasting room and making sure we have the stock so that people who visit the estate will be able to, to taste our wines. And um, going forward now that we are slowly the newer blocks are kicking in we've got larger production and we can start to look at at those other options are the, other, the other producers can you buy in from them or they're also using their own their, their stock to full capacity um so we're the as far as i'm aware we're the only registered estate um in case then so everything we do will be 100 percent from the farm okay um i know that i think you know, the others, Highgate, they still cased in, but they, they might have bought some grapes from, um, I think there's a Hilton vineyard. Um, so it's, it's still keeping it within cased in, but for us, we are 100% estate grown and we will always keep it 100% estate grown. So both, this year is a small harvest um, and we wish we had more, but that's, that's the way it is and it will stay 100% Abingdon, so a small harvest is a small harvest. <laughs> Laurie, right now about this, uh, the next thing looks like your baby, um, the Kaizetin School of Wine. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Mm. So my um, original journey was all through the Wine and Spirit Education Trust in the UK, so WACT. And I, I went through to my diploma level when I moved home, and at the, at the time I moved back, there was only one other uh, school uh, for WACT, which Kathy Marston's running in the Cape. And I really wanted to, to offer something on the East Coast and to be able to, to offer the courses, which are wonderful courses, um, internationally recognized WACT wine courses. And I wanted to be able to bring that to KZN. So I decided to open the school, um, which was back in 2014, I think. And, and run a range of different classes so that we could offer wine courses in Natal um, and to anyone just, I'm really passionate about wine education and just be able to expand that. So yeah, the Kezidin School of Wine is run on the farm and we run different courses from really fun, quick one day courses through to the WSET level three, a lot more intense courses. Well, I suppose for the growth in tourism in South Africa, the last few years um, demand from hotels and places like that who need, um, you know, people who are educated in wine has also grown. Exactly, yeah. And it's, I think, especially for KZN, you know, we don't have that history of a wine culture. Mm. We, do, we need, um, I think there's a lot of work to be done in terms of the, the service and the wine education. Just a quick interruption, but I do need to remind you that we are currently in a very difficult time. The South African government has set up a fund where businesses and individuals can donate to support our country through this crisis. Go to the website now and add your small donation, www.solidarityfund.co.za. Please join us all in the fight against COVID-19. That is at www.solidarityfund.co.za. Now, let's get on with the show. So, um, Laurie, the, the, the thing that has, you know, on our minds all the time with the lockdown and everything, the coronavirus, and um, this has forced everyone to rethink their business model. Um, mm. Do you have any changes or new ideas in mind, maybe online sales? What are you guys thinking? Um, yeah, I think it's certainly forced everyone to, to really look at things. Um, so it's, obviously, I think hospitality has been hit in a huge way, um, mm -hmm. and with the ban of alcohol sales, the wine industry, it's its tough times for us. So I think everybody needs to, to be able to look at, at different ways to move forward. Um, anything that is digitally minded, I think is a great way at the moment. I think, you know, Corona really has brought about kind of a digital transformation of business. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, online sales is definitely, once we can open sales, that will be fantastic for us. Um, and I think 
what we've really been focusing on is what we've seen throughout this time was the support we've had, um, which has been really fantastic. It's just, just those really loyal supporters who have wanted to, and I think we've seen it across the industry, um, wanting to help those who, who can't drum up business at this time. So we've really had an unbelievable response of those who want to be there for us, show their support, uh, buy wines for, for after lockdown. And a large part of our kind of ideas moving forward is also around how do we give back to these people? Because mm. a lot of them have been with Abingdon since day one. They've bought our first vintage. They, they've been there and they keep buying. And I think we, you know, as a family, we had a big discussion as to, right, when this when this is over, we need to, to find a way to give back, whether it's through wine clubs and invitation to events and verticals of our old vintages, um, and just being able to support those who've really shown their support, not only through this period, but also just from the beginning. And that's, that's really humbling. That's been a really lovely kind of, in this period, which, which is not ideal, it's been, it's been really great to see. And so now it's just, that I think is our ideas is right. It's it's time to give back. Well, that's awesome. I mean, um, it's amazing how this whole thing has brought people together. Um, also, with your education um, um, side, I think the potential, the, a lot of things can be digitized and, and taken online, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we've, we've seen, again, huge support from from kind of, WACT um, courses and wine courses as to right, how can we help you to continue to run your courses? So a lot of them, and I mean, you see it on Instagram, it's fantastic just to watch, you know, different chefs cooking and, and how many people are starting to do lectures. So yeah, we're starting to, to look at ways to lecture online. Um, we have our online courses, different ways to run the exams, to, to get the materials, um, and yeah, there's, there's a huge amount of change coming in. And, you know, this is a time where people are home and maybe not as busy as they usually would have been. So it's a perfect time to start courses and to start something. Well, like um, we, yeah. No, uh, apologies. Like you say, you know, people are sitting at home, so they might as well learn something. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we're really looking at ways we have a great online support um, and ways that we can continue those courses online. Right. Your wine journey. Tell us uh, what is the most important thing that you've learned from your wine journey? Um, I think for me, because it's been a short wine journey, yet kind of a fast track wine journey, um, you're always learning. And if there's anything I think that I've learned or what I've found most important is that you never stop learning. So it's, it's, it's still always to, to just to stay humble. It doesn't really matter whether you've had two years in the industry or 60 years in the industry, you are always going to learn something new. Something's going to be thrown at you. You never, ever know enough. And I mean, especially in, in things like KZN and New Region, we are still learning every day, every time we think, okay, we've got it. Uh, you learn something new and the same thing with the courses it's just every time I've 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 done another qualification or I finished another book something else gets thrown at you so I think it is really a way of of teaching you to stay humble because this is a lifetime journey I don't think I'm ever going to know enough um, so yeah just keep keep learning you'll you'll never know enough well it's awesome that as a winemaker you can actually learn from your dad um, and also, um, what I'd like to know, your family's philosophy on winemaking. Can you sum that up a little bit for us? Yeah, I think, you know, I really admire my father and his, his philosophy. From the beginning, it's always been 100% quality driven and integrity. Um, and he, you know, we, you'll see, of course, in a family business, you have debates and, and heated discussions, shall we say. <laughs> um, the amount of times my mum and I are saying, oh, you know, Ian's done it again. You know, he's, I don't know, pruned this vine in, so that we can have a healthy crop um, time, four years time. And he's, he's been so stringent on making sure that even if you make sacrifices in a year, two years, three years, 
by the time you get to the long-term goal, um, you'll be in the right place. And I think you really admire that. So it's never been, there's no shortcuts. Um, it's always been, he's thrown 100% into it. And it's, it's been, I suppose, integrity and, and quality. So everything we've done is we're not just going to be, you know, the small guys trying to make, make some wine. Let's, let's do this with the aim to produce quality from the very beginning. Um, and even if, if that costs you short term, let's do it for the long term, which he started from the beginning. Um, and I was in the wine industry. And when you become involved as a second generation, that's when you really appreciate it. Is <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Um, Laurie, um, last question. You're very, you're, do you have a favorite wine quote or do you have your own wine quote? Ooh, um, <laughs> I have lots of them. <laughs> all right, uh, oh. probably not all alone, but um, ooh, I was thinking, yeah, there was something I read the other day that um, kind of struck home with me, and it said, "Wine is not only an object of pleasure, but an object of knowledge, and the level of that pleasure depends greatly on the knowledge." And that that really struck home with me because I. I the more you know about my wine, the more knowledge you have, the more you appreciate it, the more you want to know. Um, and that's really lovely because, you know, that knowledge of wine gives you the pleasure, but also we're in the fortunate posi position where the pleasure of wine gives you the knowledge. Um, and that to me, I think, has always been my journey in wine, is, is knowing more about wine, is being passionate enough to continue studying, studying it. Um, so that you can get greater joy out of it. And we're just, yeah, we're really lucky that the study of wine is also drinking it. Awesome. Laurie, if our listen, listeners wants to find your estate or they want to find your wines um, or they want to find you online, how do they get hold of you? Yep. So the estate is Abingdon Wine Estate. Um, so our website is www.abingdonestate.co.za. Um, the school is the KZN School of Wine. So likewise, www.kznschoolofwine.co.za. And we should, on the website, um, you'll see the full range of wines. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, please send us an email. We always have updated um, lists. And, and yeah, we can, we can send, send to the Cape. That's awesome. That's awesome. Laurie, thank you for, for spending time with us and um, I appreciate the time you've taken and uh, good luck with the rest of the lockdown and um, the rest of your year. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for supporting our show. If you would like to get more exposure for your business, please have a look at our sponsorship options. Thanks again for supporting About the Winelands. Please follow us on YouTube and on our social media channels. All details and links are in the description.